So, um, hello everyone. I'm Nigel. Um, I'm VP of Product Management for IC Intracom, and I'm responsible for IntelliNet. We partnered with Domots in order to offer a stable and rich cloud management solution for our switches. Going forward, potentially other active networking equipment also. One of the major benefits which I, I see is the open platform. By this, I mean that Domots is not tied down to one brand of equipment <clears throat> like some of our competition. This means that if our customers, you, use different brands of switches, they or you can potentially also be managed from the same app or web console. This, for me, there's nothing worse than having to use multiple interfaces to manage or administer networking equipment. So with that said, I'd like to hand you over to JB, who can explain more about Domots to all of you. Thank you, Nigel. Yeah, my name's JB Fowler. I'm our uh, product officer here at Domots. Uh, Nigel and I have been working together for, gosh, several years now. And we're now getting to the point where we're putting together this webinar to make sure you guys have a good understanding about how to really utilize remote monitoring and management. Um, and as Nigel said, you know, we're really trying to make this a more agnostic platform. While I like to think that Domotes is a, a superior RMM tool for you, what we're really trying to do is help you understand why remote monitoring and management is so important for you as a dealer or an integrator or a service provider, regardless of what you call yourself, why this is good for you. So before we do that, one thing I always like to do is point out that this is a, a live webinar. We want you to ask questions. Um, we'll have a Q&A at the end. If there's anything that's specific to Domotes, by all means, uh, you can also reach out to support at domotes.com. And I also know that we have uh, some folks from IntelliNet or IC Intracom here as well that can help answer questions too. And you can reach out to their sales and support team as well. With that being said, and based on a previous conversation that I had with uh, Nigel as well as Ian at the IC Intracom team, I wanna point out a couple of things. First of all, really this notion of break fix, right? Break fix is a term that a lot of dealers or installers will use to say, hey, I'm waiting for the customer to call me when it gets broken, then I'll go out and fix it. The reality is, is that's dead, right? I think you need to be considering the fact that if you are still in that mode of business, if you are still running your business that way, there's a lot of disadvantages that you have right now and you're giving a lot of advantages advantages to your um, competition that's out there. So why do I say that? Well, what's happening in your world today? The reality is, is that in customers are getting more and more frustrated with, um, with systems that are out there because they're getting more and more complex, right? They often will break and it's not because of any fault of theirs, but it's because it needs firmware updates, it needs uh, changes or configuration changes, whatever it may be. Whatever it is you may be stalling, whether that's a security system uh, with cameras or access control systems, or whether it's a complex automation system, right? A lot of these things require updates and in customers get more and more frustrated when things aren't working like they should be. I would say that you are also getting frustrated with some of these things. So when a break fix um, situation occurs, all of a sudden you have to uh, deal with that at that moment. Consider it to be unplanned scheduling, right? That, that happens, right? You all of a sudden have to go in and resolve um, your customer's problem for whatever issue. And what you may find out is that they just needed a power cycle, okay? But the fact that that you had to roll a truck out to their site, you had figured out that they had just done something dumb or that the system went into some sort of self-update and you just had to power cycle it. Regardless, it was unplanned and it's expensive, okay? And those are things that um, causes a lot of this frustration that occurs with respect to this break fix world. The truth of the matter is because systems are more and more complex, and because a lot of systems do need firmware updates for various reasons that we'll talk about, 
um, a lot of times that just gets dropped, okay? And people end up not maintaining the systems the way they should be. Whether you set the expectations that the customer should do it, or whether you set the expectations with your team that you guys would do it as installers, um, the reality is that a lot of that is not getting handled in the right way. I think it's really, really important for you to be setting expectations with your customers, right? They can't read your mind. I know that so many of these installers and these dealers out there today love to sell hardware. It's really easy to sell hardware, but the truth of the matter is, is that if you're not thinking about how that hardware is going to behave six months, a year, two years from now, then I would tell you that you're doing your customers a disservice. Um, I have on, on these images here, right, this notion of expectations and reality and this notion of expectations and satisfaction, right? The truth of the matter is, is that if you're not setting the right expectations with your customers, you're going to lower the satisfaction that your customers will see. And the reality is that it's just going to be a cluster. Okay, and you want to try to avoid that as best as possible. A few things to point out, and I've said this already, but complex systems, these systems that you are installing, and the fact that you are watching this webinar means that you're dealing with complex systems, whether it's the IntelliNet networking side of things, or you're trying to figure out how to monitor and manage systems through through tools, right? You're, you're here because you wanna improve the way in which you're working with these complex network-based systems. And as I also said before, all of these systems require some form of system update, whether it's a firmware update for features, but more often than not, a lot of these firmware updates that are happening uh, in today's world have to do with closing of security holes. You may have heard the term patching, right? That's exactly what a lot of these system updates are about and you should be prepared to do that with your customers. Here's another key point that I wanna bring across, and I know all of you know this, right? I know, I know many of you, uh, like me, watched Stuart Smalley growing up, and, and you're good enough and you're smart enough, but the truth of the matter is that you do have a complex job, right? And you're good at it, you deserve to be paid for it, okay? And that may sound a little uh, simplistic, but I think what, a lot of dealers and what a lot of installers aren't hearing, aren't getting, is that if these things were so easy to maintain and manage, customers would do it themselves, right? There's a lot of consumer-based products out there which have tried to simplify how these tools get installed. But if you are coming into a customer system, whether it's a residential application or a commercial application, okay, you are there because you know how to deal with the network. You know how to deal with the devices that you're installing. Whether you're going into complex systems like automation systems, or you're installing security cameras with NVRs, maybe cloud control, cloud maintenance, right? All of these things are things that you've built expertise on. And an important part of that expertise is that servicing side, okay? It's a side that you should absolutely be getting paid for. You need to set the expectations that these systems are complex. You need to set expectations that these systems do need firmware updates and they do require maintenance. Even if that maintenance is as simple as cleaning the fans out of these uh, pieces of hardware, or if it is doing those firmware updates, you need to set those expectations up at the beginning and you're the guy for the job, okay? but you also should be willing to get paid for that. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about how we justify some of that later on here. So if I've stayed, if I made the statement that break fix is dead, I think it's very appropriate to say that proactive monitoring, proactive maintenance, if you will, is absolutely in, okay? I always like to talk about this notion of a recovery paradox. And the reason I talk about this is because it's an important aspect to why being proactive with your customers so, is so very, very important. So what this recovery paradox says is that over time, working with your customers, okay, if all things kind of just stay as they are, loyalty will just naturally grow. I'm sure you're having conversations with your customers every so often. You're going in there, seeing how things are working, seeing how 
products are doing, right? If it's working or not, right? As long as the system continues to operate as expected, then that loyalty towards you as the installer or as the dealer will continue to grow, right? And by the way, just as a side note, this is also how you generate, um, this is how you generate new customers, right? Your old customers continue to talk, right? The, the notion of word of mouth, right? Continues to talk about how you as their installer, you as their dealer have done such a good job for them. And that is a very good thing. But the recovery paradox does something interesting. It says that if a problem occurs on the network, right? Something crashes, okay? Something goes down. The unfortunate side effect is that that customer loyalty also goes down, right, in the moment. But, and this is the important part of this paradox, if you respond quickly, if you react in a positive way towards this issue, if you communicate effectively with this customer about what happened, as well as if you put things in place to help minimize the occurrence of that happening again, it actually says that loyalty towards or from that customer actually increases. This is really important when we think about the break fix model versus the proactive monitoring side of things and the proactive management that we're going to get into, right? If you have a, the idea behind this paradox is to shorten the amount of time when the customer loyalty is waning, okay? If you can react faster, if you can make sure that you're on top of it, if you can tell the customer, hey, Mr. Customer, we noticed something went wrong in the systems that we've deployed. We want to react quickly and we want to help you get this fixed fast. Let me schedule an on-site visit. Let me power cycle this thing. Let me do the firmware update. Let me do whatever I need to do in order to bring this system back up. If you are proactively working with your customer on these types of situations that occur, I guarantee you that loyalty is going to increase from your customer. If you force the customer to do your job, okay, if you force the customer to call you, to let you know that something went wrong, that just increases the amount of time that their loyalty is, has dropped. And it also increases the opportunity for your competition to come in. Okay, so changing the way in which we do uh, business, that's the new way, right? I just watched the last uh, episode of uh, the Book of Boba Fett last night. It's great to see the Mandalorian back in there, but I have to say that proactive management, this is the way, okay? This is the way you need to be doing things nowadays. Why is that? And let's describe what this really means, right? Proactive management means that you are actively maintaining your client systems, right? You're not waiting for that phone call from the customer, okay? You are actively watching, you're actively monitoring, you're looking for alerts, right, in that system, and you're taking action when those alerts occur, okay? Um, you're also scheduling updates to these systems, okay? I think an important part of dealing with these network-based systems, the intelligence systems, the smart devices, whether they're smart televisions, or their security cameras and NVRs or their control systems, right? You need to be scheduling updates towards these things. But this is an important part of proactive management. And I think this is where we start to deviate from that whole break fix versus proactive. This needs to be done on your schedule, okay? You need to let the customer know, it's like, hey, we're gonna be out there three months from now, or we're gonna be out there six months from now so we can do a scheduled maintenance. Now. Here's the key too that I want you to be thinking about. We'll talk a little bit more about this. But when you start to schedule things on your time, this allows you to handle how you do the maintenance, how you do the firmware upgrades. And if you can do it without the notion of a truck roll, now you're starting to save operational costs as well. So not, our, not only are you becoming more efficient, but you're also, uh, lowering your cost of operations, which is such an important part of this notion of proactive monitoring and management. So the other thing with proactive management, right? And, and look, the, the truth of the matter is, and I've talked about this before, we all know that uh, the, the proverbial shit happens, right? Things go wrong, right? 
you should be the one that's informing your customer when something's not working as expected. The only way you can do that is if you have a tool that is monitoring that system, that is looking for it to be online or offline, or you're looking for performance degradation, or you're looking for um, firmware deviations, right? Something where the, the firmware in a device is maybe not on the latest, right? Because the manufacturer just issued a new update, which happened to patch a security hole, or maybe it added a new feature that your customer's been looking for. So that's an important aspect here. Lastly, truck rolls are inevitable. In fact, a lot of people say, I use truck rolls to improve my sales. No doubt, right? In fact, one of the best opportunities for you to increase your sales is by going on site to a customer, right? Whether it's at their home or, or in their business, but looking at what they have going on, looking at the situation, and then allowing your support team, your sales team, your technician who's ever out there to actually look at, hey, are you aware that that television is quite old? We could update that. Or think about, uh, think about, hey, are you aware that you know this particular company released a new um, feature and capability? It becomes an upsell opportunity. I totally get that. So you never want to, or you'll never eliminate truck rolls completely. But what I will say is if there is a problem on the network and something is not working as expected, it would be really nice to have more insight into what's going on on that network so that you can bring out the right hardware the first time and you're not doing two truck rolls. Okay, that's an important part of uh, proactive management as well because it does give you that insight as to what may be wrong. Maybe it's not that end device that's broken, maybe it's a, um, a piece of networking equipment, maybe it is the, another piece of hardware that's actually degrading the performance on the network that you need to manage and fix. Having insight into that is gonna help you improve, again, your operational costs and decrease that time, that downtime that any customer has. So those are some important aspects here of proactive management. And of course, yes, Delmotes is here to help you, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, be a webinar here with me if I didn't talk at least a little bit about how Domotes is here to help, right? I will say, and again, going back to the fact that this is kind of an agnostic um, uh, webinar, right? That we're talking about many different types of tools. This is about awareness. There are other tools out there, but I definitely feel that Domotes is one of the best in class, right? Um, with how we do these things, right? It's gonna actively monitor these systems that you've installed. It's going to allow remote access into the systems that uh, need software updates. It's going to give you the ability to reboot systems from anywhere in the world. Okay, These are all key points of any good uh, remote monitoring and management tool. But another thing that I think is so important that you need to be able to do, and this gets back to that recovery paradox that we talked about, the only way in which you can improve that loyalty is if you are communicating with the customer on the things that have happened, right? How you are continuing to maintain their uh, system. Domotes allows you to generate reports, even simplistic reports, right? Looking at internet um, service provider uh, performance, right? Uh, are, they, are they maintaining their uptimes like they should? Are they maintaining their bandwidths? What's the latency of these systems? These are the types of things that you can generate very easily in reports. You can generate information about like which of my technicians are actively engaged in the account, making sure things are working right, looking at downtime of particular devices or systems on that network, looking at performance of the network itself, right? These are all keys that Domotes provides and makes it an extremely valuable tool to help you with um, your operations and your management of your customers. So, to talk a little bit about Domotes and how um, we look at ourselves, first of all, we are a network management tool, a network monitoring tool. Okay, we're going to help you manage the routers, the firewalls, the wireless access points, the managed switches that are out there. We're going to do a really, really good job of all of that, at least as best as we can. But furthermore, and we're going to talk a little bit about this at the end, 
as well, we do a really good job of understanding all the assets that are on the network. When I say assets, I mean any of the, the devices that are on that network, whether they are PCs, laptops, and servers, or whether they're control systems or security cameras, right? We understand all of that. We document it really well at the network level. And in fact, we integrate with a lot of documentation systems that are out there. But if you're just into using Excel, then you certainly can just do that too and have things locked into there or, or brought into there through our, our integration there with Excel. Another thing, of course, and I think this is, this is gonna be part of our end conversation here, but security and awareness of these networks that you're installing. The one thing that you as a dealer don't wanna be is the weakest link within any system, right? So if you're installing devices onto a network, making sure that you're putting in devices that are secure and you're, you're making sure that that security that you've installed is maintained. And when I talk about security here, I'm really referencing cybersecurity, right? All of these, um, systems that are out there that have ports that are open, we're gonna make sure that we look at that and we help you understand what's going on and yet help you manage that better. So that's some key points of Dell modes. So how do we do this, right? Well, some of the things that we do really, really well is the discovery of all these devices, the classifications of these devices. We'll not just show you a MAC address, right? We'll tell you that that MAC address is associated with Apple and we'll go as far as telling you that that may be an iPhone 10. Right? We'll look at PCs, laptops, servers, virtual machines, and we're gonna give you as much information about those devices as possible, okay? More importantly, when it comes to that proactive monitoring side, we're gonna allow you to set alerts on these important devices. All of the network infrastructure devices should absolutely have important alerts on those so that you know that if a wireless access point goes offline for whatever reason, or a critical device on the network. Maybe, it's, maybe it is a security camera. Maybe it is a control system. We're gonna make sure that you understand that that system went offline and we're gonna give you an alert immediately on that. Beyond that, okay, once you have that alert, once you know that something's going wrong, it's really about securely connecting into that system and managing that device, managing that platform. We give you multiple ways to securely connect into any device, whether it's an individual device or when it's virtually placing your laptop, your PC, even your mobile device onto that network so you can go in and manage that device through a, a, a VPN, we give you the ability to do that. And of course, I would uh, be remiss if I didn't say that our system is extremely easy to deploy, it's fast, and it starts working for you immediately. I mean, the idea behind Domotes is that we are a tool for you as a dealer to help run your business much more efficiently and increase that customer loyalty, right? We want to exploit that recovery paradox and make you guys better with your customers. So that way you can continue to generate recurring revenue with your customers. A couple key points, and I'll go through this fast. Right, Domotes allows for easy power cycling regardless of the PDU, right? That power distribution unit that you're using. I mean, here I'm showing SurgeX. I mean, a lot of people are familiar with watt boxes. A lot of people are familiar with Panamax and Bluebolt. We work with all of them. We work with Legrand. We work with all of these different PDUs that are out there. Whether they are consumer grade, okay, or commercial and enterprise grade, we have drivers and the capability to uh, see all of these different de devices and PDUs, right? It's actually, we go beyond monitoring. And I know that a lot of the IntelliNet and IC Intracom customers deal with security systems all the time. You're installing security cameras, whether that's into residential applications or commercial applications, right? One of the things that Domotes does extremely well is that we're not only gonna tell you that the camera is online and that it's functioning properly, but we're gonna be able to even grab a snapshot. In fact, you have the ability to even see the video feed through the Domotes application. The reason that this is so cool is because now you can be rest assured that you're gonna get a report, or excuse me, get an alert when um, a device or the camera goes offline, but you also can generate reports to your customers that say, hey, not only is this camera online, but look at this, it's pointed in the right direction, it's streaming video as we expect, right? So this is just some of the extra power and benefits that you have with a tool like Domotes. The other thing, and I mentioned this already, 
But one of the beauties of Domotes is how we discover all of the devices that are on the network and we look at which ports are available for management. Often you hear of things like port 80, HTTP, right? The web page of any device. We can discover that. We discover Telnet, we discover SSH, right? So if those types of ports are available um, for management of the device, we can actually remotely connect into that. And there's a lot of uh, power within how Domotes does that and handles that. A few other key points that I'm gonna make, and this is where I get into the little bit more of the advanced side of what Domotes does. But for those dealers, right, for those installers, those integrators that are dealing with a lot more jobs, I want you to know that Domotes is extremely scalable. We're a multi-tenant platform, which allows you to see hundreds, if not thousands of customers in uh, one view, okay? We are a NOC or a network operation center type of view, it gives you this simple red, yellow, green status. So if you have some tier one support guys that are looking after hundreds of customers, Right, this type of view makes it easy for them to see when and where systems um, are down, what the status is of these systems in a single snapshot type of view. Um, another thing that we do, right, we discover all those assets, but we also build out a network topology that can show you exactly how all these devices are in interconnected through the management platform. So that's one of the powerful things that Domotes does. We aggregate the data across all of these different networks. We can interrogate the systems that are on that network through things like SNMP and TCP. So simple network management protocol, as well as just standard TCP IP type connections where we can see uh, the status of different ports or different processes that are running on various ports. We aggregate that over time and we can show you um, how a device is behaving. Very, very useful when it comes to things like latency and understanding um, how the network performance has changed over time. We also, and this is something that we've re recently released, which I'm super, super excited about, this notion of what we call real-time monitoring dashboards. So in the previous NOC screen, you saw the agents, right? The networks that you were looking at. It could have been a residence, right? It could have been a building that you were looking at for a commercial application. You now have the ability within Domotes to look at particular types of devices across all your customers in a single dashboard. I mean, here you see this picture, right? Showing something like Cisco, right? Looking at Cisco phones, looking at Meraki WAPs, whatever they may be, right? We can do the same thing, of course, with IntelliNet devices. If we wanted to look at all of the IntelliNet switches that I have and then look at which firmwares these things are running on, we can look at SNMP of these devices and we can look at them across all of our agents. And we can see that in real time, what's going on. We can see whether they're online, whether they're offline. So that way we know how to take action on these. What I think is so amazing about this is it's across all of your tenants or across all of your customers. And we can get that aggregated view as a whole, making it easier for your support team to do the job that they need. And again, it goes back to that efficiency. How can we make you as a dealer, you as an integrator, be more efficient and work faster with your customers? That to me is what it's about. We give you real-time diagnostics of what's going on in the network. So I know, I know that we're dealing with a lot of people here on this call that have managed networks. You've dealt with complex managed switches and you, whether you've dealt with stack switches or you've, you've put uh, switches um, in a hierarchical form, right? You know how latency, how drop packets, right? How um, uh, packets being discarded can affect the network. You also know when you find when VLANs get messed up, right? So when you're dealing with virtual LANs or you're dealing with subnets, right? Domotes makes it really easy to understand what's going on inside that network and find out where you have troubled uh, either ports or troubled devices. And we can set alerts on those things. We make it super easy for you to do that. And I'm excited to be working with the IntelliNet team to do some of these things. And oh, by the way, whether you're dealing with the local area network or you're dealing with the wide area network. So if you have um, customers that have multiple sites that are connected over VPNs, Domotes allows you to see the status across these different sites and see the latency from one site to another, the performance that's going between one site to another. So it's just, again, makes it really, really powerful for those customers that need that more advanced um, uh, accessibility. 
I mentioned this before, and I want to take a step away from domotes in general, and I want to go back into why you as a dealer, why you as an integrator need to be thinking about proactive monitoring, but also be thinking about the different aspects that are occurring in this world today that are going to affect you. Okay, I will say if you are a residential integrator, you're probably a little bit further removed from the things I'm about to talk about, which is security and compliance. But I do think, I do think that, that is, this is coming uh, to a customer very close to you at some point very, very soon. If you are dealing with um, commercial applications, okay, if you are going to small businesses, whether it's uh, certainly doctor's offices, lawyer's offices, dentist offices, even just small retail shops that you may be installing networks for. I want you to know that security and compliance and dealing with regulations, dealing with the standards, dealing with the different policies that are being made and put into law now, this is gonna be very, very important to you. So hear me out and then let's think about how a solution like Domo, right, a remote monitoring and management tool can help you there. So first of all, how are these things affecting you? Well. You know, I really don't want to spend a lot of time talking about cybersecurity in general and cyber threats. Um, I think that's fairly well understood. You guys know what happens with malware. You, you know what happens with ransomware. You also know that I'm sure some of you have either been close to it or you've had customers of yours that have had to deal with it. Maybe you've had to deal with it yourself. Okay, I bring this, I bring this up because um, there's a lot of different information. There's a lot of different resources that are out there and you can get information about that. What I want to focus on a little bit more here are some of these, uh, what I consider to be uh, regulated industries. And I want you to be aware of the fact that service providers, commercial integrators, right, even residential integrators are soon going to have to be dealing with some of the ramifications of the different um, security threats that have been out there, the security issues. So case in point, right? Louisiana happened to, um, uh, they basically put a, a bill, they passed a, a law that forced service providers to maintain a level of um, security. So there's this notion, or maybe you guys have heard of this, right? Uh, CM MMC, right, the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification, right? This bill essentially said that you had to pass a certain level of um, certification in order to work for businesses, um, especially work in government applications, which is really what CMMC is about. But you had to have that in place in order to um, prove that you knew how to deal with customer data, okay? Um, I will point out a couple more things, and if you look at things like NIST, right, which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which really helped us um, establish that those guidelines of CMMC, um, NIST here says that you need to be documenting and doing real-time network monitoring and management, right? That is a must for you as a um, as an integrator or as a service provider, somebody who is servicing the networks of your customers, okay? You need to have an understanding of how you've installed that network, what it looks like. You can see there's a lot of what we call controls around this that you have to deal with, but the things that I've highlighted in red here are ones that directly affect the network and having a tool that helps you manage those portions of it will make your life a heck of a lot easier. And if we go to the next one here, you'll notice that this one I think is an ISO 27001, right? You can find a lot of this information really anywhere, okay? I do think that you see ISO 27001 primarily in manufacturing facilities and commercial industries. I bring this up because depending on where um, or which customers you service, where you're located as well, You'll see these different types of, um, uh, I guess I would call them uh, processes, security processes um, that you're going to have to deal with. All of these, right? Whether you're dealing with NIST, 
whether you're dealing with ISO, whether you're even dealing with things like PCI compliance, right? So this is your payment card, uh, credit card, essentially transactions, right? Uh, they all have fundamental um, requirements and they all look very, very similar, although they have different, uh, different flavors depending on what they care about. Okay, but they all require some level of documentation. They require all level of, or some level of, of monitoring, proactively monitoring the network. Whether you're looking at for new devices showing up on the network, or whether you're looking for critical devices falling off the network, okay, um, you have to have these types of processes in place. And so I'm not gonna spend much more time on this. I just really wanted to bring awareness to you as installers and dealers that these types of things are coming down the pipe. The more often that we see security breaches, whether it's at the government level, whether we see it at um, the enterprise and corporate level, or whether we see it at small uh, business levels, right? You guys are a critical part or can be a part of helping maintain that security for your customers. So awareness of these different types of security processes and how a remote monitoring and management tool can help you with that, I think is so very, very important. The last thing I wanna to touch on, okay? And I think, I think a lot of, um, I, I talked to a lot of dealers. I've talked to a lot of dealers over the last uh, 10 years in the, especially in the um, residential AV space, but also the commercial AV space. Um, someday, right, if you're an owner inside the company or you're a manager in the company, right, you probably want to get out of the business. You may want to retire actually one day. Some of you may want to just work forever. But I want to point out that having a business that simply sells hardware, okay, you have inventory, you sell it, you've got a customer list, right, you may sell that. That has a very static value. It's a very understood value. The one challenge that you have with hardware, and I'm sure many of you know this because you may have some uh, devices that are still in your warehouse that are just aging and getting old, and they very, very quickly um, lose their value, right? Nobody wants to buy a tube TV anymore. Nobody wants to buy a 1080p TV anymore. So you can see how fast that technology and that hardware um, the value of it gets lost. It's very difficult to sell a business just based off of a customer list, okay, and inventory anymore. What is more valuable and what investors are starting to look for is recurring revenue that's coming from a business. Recurring revenues have a way higher multiplier because of the fact that it is predictable revenue. I say this to you guys because you can go out and you can go establish a recurring revenue model. There's lots and lots of websites that will say, these are the things you need to do in order to start charging customers for uh, your business, right? Or for your services. The critical part of having any sort of service model put in place is making sure that you have the right tools inside your company so that you can be extremely efficient when it comes to how you manage your customers with respect to service contracts, right? SLA, service level agreements, whether they are month to month or whether they are yearly or annually or whether you do it for longer terms, you know, three and five year maintenance contracts, right? Those are extremely valuable to uh, you and to your um, your clients, okay? It's, and it's even more valuable to your investors. The reason I talk about service level agreements in so many of my discussions is because it really goes back to what I said at the beginning. It sets an expectation with your customers about how you are going to maintain the products that you are installing and more so, what are you going to do when something goes wrong, okay? The warranty is great, but a warranty is only good in a break fix world, okay? Um, having, giving the customer a feeling that you are there for them no matter what goes wrong, right, is what that service level agreement is about. And the more you can do with your customers, the more revenue you can gain, whether it's on a per month or per year basis. And the more of those that you have, 
the better off you're going to be from a, I'm going to call it selling of the company, right? The worth of your company one day, whether you want to hand that off to your kids, whether you want to sell that off to um, another buyer, whatever it is, making sure that you have predictable recurring revenue is going to be much more valuable to you. A tool like Domotes, which helps give you insight, is one of the key pieces to that puzzle. It's how you help lower your costs while improving that loyalty, like I've talked about before. I still think you need to have things like a ticketing system. I think you need to have a CRM, right? So a customer management, a resource management tool, right? You need those things in place, depending on the size of your company, but absolutely a tool like Domotes helps you get there much faster. With that being said, I've hit my my 40 minute mark right on right on the nose like I wanted to do here, Nigel. Um, I have not looked to see if we have um, any key questions that came in, but I want to ask you, Nigel. Right? Um, mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on this? Do you have any Do you have any perspectives on things that I said? Anything that maybe caught you off guard or it was was good? No, I, I think you've um, you hit the nail on the head with most of the, the slides there and um, helping everyone understand that Domos provides a lot more than just cloud management of IntelliNet switches. So, um, and this is the thing which I think a lot of our customers weren't aware of and didn't know why they would want to invest in um, the, the Domos service as well as, as buying our switches. So I'm, I'm very pleased with, um, with everything we've said this evening. Well, sorry, <laughs> this evening for me, <laughs> morning for you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm, I have nothing else to say, really. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has got any, any questions. I've not seen anything posted in the, um, in the questions column there, but uh, one, of the, um, obviously. one of the questions that, that we, we always get, Nigel, with, which I think is, a, is an important part to bring up here is, you know, how does, how does Domotes compare with other platforms? that are out there. You know, I, I spoke a lot about, you know, the different solutions and needing a solution. So how do we compare? You know, and I, I'll just, I'll just hit this right up front, right? Domotes isn't the cheapest solution that's out there, but we absolutely are one of the best. And the reason I say that is because when dealers and installers utilize us, they see a couple things. One is it's extremely simple. And in fact, with the IntelliNet switches, right? The one of the things that um, we do very quickly is we will automatically discover that we have a managed switch, an IntelliNet switch on the network. We will recognize the fact that it's a P if it is a PoE-based managed switch, that the PoE ports are there. We can start um, looking at bandwidth across that switch immediately. We can start looking at how much power is being consumed by the PoE ports. We also allow you to very quickly power cycle any PoE-based device through those, through those ports. And all of that is done within 10 to 15 minutes of discovering the whole network. Um, if you have a smaller network, it's even faster. But if you have a large network, that is, um, that is one of the things that we, we do here, right? So we make it quick and easy. Um, the other thing, and of course, I, I showed some slides about all the performance metrics and how we do that, how we can map the network. Those are features that you really don't get from other lower cost tools that I think enables Domotes to be that much better of a platform. And ultimately, it's about helping you document with your customers what those networks look like. So I think that's a key point. Um, we did actually get a question here, I guess, kind of strictly to Domo. It's how many devices can you connect to Domo? Uh, you'll see on our, our webpage. So if you go to domo.com, we talk about this notion of unlimited devices. And I love, I love, you know, to use that marketing term and, and bless our marketing people for, for putting the word unlimited out there. The reality is, is that Domo's can, we, we've just recently added some capabilities where we can look up to a slash 16 network. So if you're familiar with the notion of CIDRs, right, we can, we can handle uh, very, very large networks, okay? Slash 16, if, if every single device or every IP address of a slash 16 was taken, that would equate to something like 65,000 devices. Uh, the reality is, is that networks are never that big with that many devices. 
the basic domote service um, can run on a slash 22 network, which is 1,024 devices that you can um, look at. It's very easy for us to maintain that. And in fact, you can even look at multiple VLANs, which gives you even more than that slash 22. So you can look at you know, a slash 22 plus multiple slash 24 networks. We also can look at, so I should clarify, when we look at a VLAN, we're looking at actually a layer two of the network. Okay, so from that um, layer modeling. Uh, when we look at subnets, of course, we're looking at layer three, and you can have several subnets that you, you monitor as well, which can give you hundreds more devices. So Domotes is a very powerful tool and can allow you to look at many, many different types of devices. So thank you for that question. Oh, you know what? I see Nigel. I'm at my 45 minute mark now, which we said we mm -hmm. wanted to keep this short. And, and so that way people had some extra time. So I think we'll, we'll go ahead and end it here. Nigel, did you have any more uh, parting thoughts? No, I'm, all, all I'm gonna say is that um, obviously this has been recorded and if anybody wants a copy, then they should give us, um, give us a shout out. Or if you wanna show the video to somebody else, then let us know and we can have it forwarded on to you. Um, other than that, I'd just like to say, everybody, thanks for thanks for coming today, and um, I hope you found it informative. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nigel. Talk to you soon. Thank you, everybody. Thanks very much.